Hey guys, it's Shay here again with Alden Series. We have Stacy, and she's going to explain um, about the Benjamin Corp Diary. Hi, Stacy. Hi. How's it going? Good. How are you? Good. Awesome. So, can you remind our viewers what you do here in Alden? Yeah. So, I'm the digital projects librarian for Arts and Archives. So, basically, I just um, put together digital projects, uh, find, identify archival materials that could be digitized and put online for everyone. So, that's like the main thrust of my job. Awesome. So what do you have here for us today? Yeah, so this is the Benjamin Corp autobiography. I can hold it up. I don't know how well that shows up. Um, but this was written in the 1830s by a guy named Benjamin Corp. He was born in England, but eventually moved to Ohio and actually oversaw construction on some of the buildings here at OU when it was just getting started. Um, and this is a diary he wrote to his daughter, Margaret. She was born when he was about 70 years old. Uh, so he didn't know if he would live long enough to tell her about his life and to give her, you know, fatherly wisdom and all that. So that's what this is. It's for her. It's all the things he wants her to know, basically. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. 70 years old, that's pretty old. So. Yeah, it's pretty, <laughs> it's pretty old, yeah. I think she was like five when he started writing it. So. Cool. Yeah. Did he mention why he came from London to uh, Yeah, it's interesting. He doesn't go into it too much. Um, he starts wanting to move to the United States and about... 1875, I think, mm -hmm. um, and he comes to the United States first and is in Boston for a little while, um, and at one point he says, I had heard so much about the state of Ohio really? that I had to go see it. Um, so he comes to Ohio, and then he spends 13 days wandering around Marietta and decides, I have to live here, and um, builds a house and stays forever. That's cool. Yeah. And like, what fun facts did he or that. Did he leave for his daughter? Um, well, so I mean, he told her a bunch about um, all the different places that he mm -hmm. visited, visited, you know, what all the people were like, what they ate, mm -hmm. what languages they spoke, that sort of thing. He also left her a ton of, I don't know if this was fun facts, but a yeah. ton of advice. Um, he was very, very religious, so a lot of religious teachings in the book. Some housekeeping tips, like to how to make how to make old bread taste like fresh bread, like that kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, um, and he was really big into the temperance movement, so he really was against drinking alcohol. Okay. So he talks about that a lot in the in the book. So it's it's a lot of like how to live your life advice That's for cool. his daughter. Yeah. So how do you preserve something like this? It looks pretty. Yeah, delicate. so it's actually for its age. It's in pretty decent shape. I don't know if you can, and I don't want to handle it too terribly much mm -hmm. but like you can see the paper is in pretty good shape even though it's yeah. really old um, paper can last for a really long time if you keep it dry and cool so um, we have it back in our um, archival stacks with uh, climate control back there so it stays at an even temperature it stays low humidity um, and right now it's just in a folder in a file cabinet actually so we, you probably could buy an archival acid-free box and keep mm -hmm. it in something like that and store it flat as opposed to um, in a folder in a filing cabinet, but it's been okay so far. Um, and the nice thing about this is that since it's digitized and it's totally available online, we don't have to let people handle it too much. Mm -hmm. um, so that helps, you know, ease the the damage on it from, from handling. So do you have to like come back and you know like with plants and water and stuff like that? <laughs> no, I think it's like the opposite of that. It's the really? less you mess with it, oh, the better. Yeah. Like if we put it in a box and kept mm -hmm. it somewhere cool and dry and never looked at it again, that would probably be mm -hmm. best. Although it wouldn't do anything much sense. good. <laughs> yeah. So how do you get a hold of this information? Like how do you access it? Does someone just drop it off, or you go searching? Just um, so ideally, the process for when we accept archival materials is the donor comes to us. Um, we have a donor agreement that we sign, and we keep track of you know who donated it, when they donated it, where it came from, why it's important, um, so we can track you know its origins. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, all I have the finding aid for this collection, and all it says is that this item was donated um, on an unknown date. So, in a perfect world, we would know all of that, but mm -hmm. um, for this particular item, we don't. Uh, so you know that's just those imperfections, and in the information happens sometimes. And that's cool. Um, can so can students and locals come and see it, or they have to, or they can't really be hands on with it. So, um, so I mean, you, we we do still let people look at it. Although I mean, it would probably be honestly, if you wanted to be able to actually read it when mm -hmm. it where it is online, it's in the Ohio Memory website. Mm -hmm. um, it has full transcripts, and the handwriting is kind of hard. His spelling is really irregular. 
um, and it's cursive, and it's really old-fashioned cursive, so it's difficult to read, so it's actually easier, I think, if you look at it online and have the transcripts right next to it, um, but you can come, if you want to see the physical object, you can come look here, too. All right. All right, well, thank you, Stacy. Like she said, you can come and see the book in person if you would like, but it'll probably be better if you can access it online. Um, if you have any other questions, just drop it in the comments or come in and talk to Stacey. Thanks.